Yeah, we have uh, time for uh, Q and A. Um, is there anything you want to say first? Or maybe uh, bring up uh, some of the yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank you everybody for for coming. Um, that was quite an experience. But prior to this, I'd seen it in the room with 15 people. <laughs> so uh, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> We have uh, a number of people um, in the cast and crew. I mean, who do we bring in? That's weird. Yeah, all right, well, so Jackie uh, and Sam, Jackie Kelman Bisbee, Sam Bisbee, our producers, Lance Accord, <laughs> the cinematographer, and Alex Metcalf, who I wrote the script with. Um, yeah, yeah. Silver Castle, Timo Hoffman. Christina Hendricks. Uh, any, um, any questions out there? Raise your hands. Maybe I'll, I'll start, John. I know um, it's based on a, a book. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, when you first read the book and, and kind of what it is? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I first read the book about 10 years ago um, uh, and loved it and inquired about the rights and they were not available or sold they were not available so I, 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 I struggled a little bit with it. I tried to, tried to work that out. It wasn't going to happen and I forgot about it. About five years later somebody reminded me, you know, where after that book you were so fond of and I inquired again and was told that it was available and so I decided to, out, in the interim I had written a screenplay which didn't turn out so well. So I thought, well, I don't want to do that again. Uh, let me outline it and see if it works as well as I thought it did. And uh, it did, and it was sort of a draft by the time I finished, and then I called to say, okay, let's, let's go ahead. And they said, oh, we made a mistake, it's still not available. <laughs> so I went ahead anyway, and then eventually we worked that out, and I wrote many drafts, and then I went to Alex, who is a proper screenwriter, and, um, and together we, I think you had said it was more the books. I mean, it was about 90% there, and then it was, I needed help with someone who knew how to write a proper screenplay. And, uh, and Alex and I worked that out, and then, um, yeah, that's, so that's how the material, that's, that's how that sort of gestated, anyway. Any questions? Yeah, right there. The question is, does he consider the story in sort of more fantasy or is it really sort of evocative of, of that area of, of America? It does sort of enter the absurd a couple times. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and, but I guess what I, I liked about it was the middle America quality, the sort of no-nonsense um, quality of these people to be able to cut through all the bullshit and just talk straight or, and do it do what needs to be done to get to get the job done, to get what they want. And um, and there was a sort of a, a bedrock of, of of straight talk and kind of casual violence and mayhem that I wanted to be believable so that it became could become funny. Um, and that, you know, and, and that kind of fell to these guys. Um, you know, you know the, the script really is Pete Dexter. I mean, you know, as much as we worked on it, it really is all Pete Dexter and their qu that quality is in the book. It's it's believable as sort of realism and as, you know, near fantasy, kind of absurdist storytelling. Yeah, over here. You mentioned, or in, in the script, Temple University, which I graduated in Philadelphia, <laughs> is that just an accident? Uh, your neighborhood is maybe in Philly in the inner city that might mirror those neighborhoods. Yeah, well, it, 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 there's a couple of neighborhoods, Grace Ferry and. Uh, <laughs> Um, and what? No, well, the, the, the neighborhood was nicknamed Dev the Devil's Pocket because the people in the neighborhood were so tough and nasty they could steal money out of the Devil's Pocket. And then the book is based on that. Pete Dexter was a, was a writer for a Philadelphia newspaper and had an incident in a bar where he was uh, in a fight. And um, this was his first novel, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, but anyway, we, we, we didn't really, we didn't have the money or the, or the time to strictly make it Philadelphia. We, we couldn't shoot in Philadelphia, we shot in Yonkers, New York, and so we, uh, we kind of blurred that purposely. 
we, we, we aired on the line of Pennsylvania, the cops are wearing Pennsylvania uniforms, the Temple University, the, you know, the small details that you may or may not notice were, were Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. But the Yonkers part of it was just, you know, physically what we needed and suited our purpose. And the time is sort of a blurry period in the late 70s. Questions? Yep. Okay. Are you tempted to put yourself in the movie? No. Question is, was he was he tempted to act in the film? No, not not really. No. I mean, I'm sorry. What about future projects that you're going to do? Uh, yeah, I'm open to anything. I, but I mean, you know, it's a difficult job. Um, both are difficult jobs. I think these two would attest. You know, it's not anything to be taken casually. If it's if it's if you work to the quality that these people work. And all of these people work to then, you know, casually sort of dropping in to both is extremely difficult with this amount of time and 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 experience. I didn't want to do that to myself. And when you could get, you know, somebody like Richard Jenkins, that was probably the part that I would be most right for. You, you know, if you if you're lucky enough to get Richard Jenkins, you should probably get Richard Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back then. Uh, How, how does coming from an acting background influence his uh, directing? Um, well, I mean, I, having been on the receiving end of a lot of direction, good, bad, and, and, and mostly somewhere in between, um, I, you know, you try to give people something that they can, that they can, that, that, that's active, that's organic to the story, that's going somewhere, and, that, and, and, and then also I find that takes their mind <laughs> off of, or their self, their consciousness off of themselves, because it's a nerve-wracking business, and you're, and you're there, and you don't have a lot of time, and you've got new clothes, and you've got things that you don't know, you don't know half the time what the hell is going on. So, something simple. I don't want to talk too much. Um, I don't know. You've done both, you know? What was that? Uh, no, you were very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. As you said, it's, uh, yeah, you just got to be sensitive. You understand because you've been on that side, and so you, you have to be sensitive to what you know. And he was. I actually have a question for the actors, actually. You know, uh, Phil, you, you've worked with some first time directors before, and so how is, how is this experience compared to those of where he's coming from? And, uh, Christina, how did your experience working with him on this film compared to what you've done with him on that? Um, the thing is, is that uh, you try to get involved with projects. Um, I realized that when I came here, I didn't know what I would say, and but people would ask why you did it, that obviously are personal, and uh, and this was obviously personal to John, and so that kind of led through the whole shoot, you know, and so you kind of get on his passion train, if you want to say, you know what I mean, and so that that translates, you know, so you 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 show up and you you're exposed and you're vulnerable and you're who you are. You know, and John let that happen. And uh, we let that happen with John, and so what happened up there, you know, that's what you see in the movie. There's a lot of trust, you know, that's what happens. Um, a similar question, but uh, feeling is working on that with John, and that he felt incredibly comfortable, and, and um, we obviously after working with each other for so long, such a short time with one another, and he knows how to answer sort of exactly how I need need him to answer, we know how we're going to react to each other, but um, also just having this sort of levity uh, that I hadn't seen in John, having so much freedom and, and um, telling his story, 100% his story, and so excited to get to watch him do that and to sort of feel that energy with him, so I would say that was the big difference. Can we just, can I just acknowledge that Glenn Fleshler is out there? Glenn, stand up and say this, please. <laughs> Eddie McGee, where's Eddie McGee? There he is. No, there he is. I'll just say, you know, being that passionate about the story 
And feeling as strongly as I did about it, I felt comfortable to hire people who were equally passionate. You know, you butt heads with people, or you go round and round, or you know, work with people in their own individual way. Lance Accord is, you know, I, I, everybody was the first question, how the hell did you get Lance Accord to shoot a movie? <laughs> Lance claims that I bet him, right? That we had, we were having lunch and maybe a couple drinks, and he said, if you get Bill Hoffman to shoot, to be in this movie, I'll shoot it. I don't remember that. But, uh, but you know, that, that's the best part, is to be able to secure enough in the, in the knowledge of, that, that all these people will make it that much better, which they did. Yep, time for a couple more questions. Yeah, down in the back. Some of the challenges and challenges in directing, you know, scheduling is not my strong 